J-E-L-L-O. The Jell-O program, coming to you from Western Women's Club in San Francisco, California, starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston and Phil Harris and his orchestra. The orchestra opens a program with San Francisco from the picture of the same name. The hardest game of questions and answers is really easy compared to one question that every woman has to answer every day. What will we have for dessert tonight? Well, here's a tip. On every package of Jell-O, you'll find delicious recipe suggestions. There are different recipes on the different packages, so the variety is almost unlimited. Every sort of delicious Jell-O dessert and lots of attractive Jell-O salads that you'll find especially helpful at this time of year. Look them over at your grocers. You'll be surprised and delighted at the recipes on the Jell-O package. But remember, there's only one Jell-O, and only Jell-O brings you that delicious, extra-rich fruit flavor. That full-flavored, true fruit goodness that simply cannot be topped. So don't accept any substitutes. Look for the big red letters on the box. They spell Jell-O. That was San Francisco, played by the orchestra. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we bring you a man who has been in San Francisco a whole week and has just found out that the gold rush is over, Jack Benny. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> Hello again, this is Jack Benny talking, and Don, I think that was a very thoughtless introduction. I know perfectly well that the gold rush is over. It was in 1849. Well, Jack, then why did you bring a pick and a shovel up here with you? Because if history repeats itself, I want to be prepared. <laughs> but you know, Don, there's still a feeling here in San Francisco of the rugged frontier days. Take the money, for instance. When you get a big bill change, you don't get it back in paper. You get it back in good, solid silver dollars. You know, it makes you feel like you've got something. Yes, yes, I've noticed that, Jack. I tell you, Don, my suspenders have been so overworked, I had to take off pants insurance. <laughs> and say, Don, another thing about this town, have you noticed how friendly and courteous everyone is? So hospitable. Oh, yes, Jack, I've seldom seen people so polite. Why, Don, only yesterday when I was out driving, I happened to go through a red light, and a policeman walked up to me and said, pull over to the curb, Mr. Wise Guy. Where? Now, in what other city would they say mister? <laughs> and of course, Don, there's another great thing about San Francisco, and that's the climate. It's so invigorating, you know, it really peps you up. Well, that's quite true, Jack, but uh, they do have foggy weather here once in a while, don't they? Uh, well, Don, it isn't exactly foggy weather. I mean, you really wouldn't call it fog. Oh, you wouldn't? No. Of course, when you go out for your morning walk, it wouldn't hurt to wear a neon necktie. <laughs> you no, know, Don, Don, you know, the fog, the fog here is like our Los Angeles rain. It's just a vicious rumor. <laughs> now, only last week I had to pump 80 gallons of rumor out of my cellar. <laughs> Oh, I know how it is. Jack, I wonder where the rest of our gang is. Yeah, I hope they know we're broadcasting from the Western Women's Club. Well, I'm sure Phil Harris does. Oh, I know Phil does. He tried to get a room here. You know? <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, Phil used to go to school in this town. He has a lot of friends here, but that's no excuse for being late. You know? No, come in. Mr. Benny, on behalf of the Chamber of Commerce, I want to welcome you to San Francisco. Well, well... Now, if there's anything we can do to make your stay here pleasant, please call on us. Well, thank you very much. Now, is there anything I can do for you? Yes, keep that Maxwell off our new bridge. <laughs> hmm, how do you like that? Well, if you want to know something, Don, I already drove my Maxwell on the new bridge, and I got across almost to Oakland. Well, you did? What happened? Well, the car broke down, and it took 12 seagulls to pull it in. <laughs> You know, I drove it up from Los Angeles. Was that the phone, Jack? It ain't the Oakland Ferry. 
Hello? Hello, Mr. Benny. This is Gladys. Gladys? Yes, I'm calling for Phil Harris. He'll be over in 15 minutes. Oh, thank you. Say, by the way, uh, are you the Gladys I used to know? I was, but I moved. <laughs> hmm. Phil certainly goes around with intelligent girls. Oh, hello, Mary. Welcome to San Francisco. Hello. Well. Hey, you hear that? Hmm? Hey, that's a nice hand you got there, Mary. They kind of like you in this town, huh? Oh, I've got a lot of friends here, Jack. I know so many people. Oh, sure. I almost forgot, folks. Mary's a local girl. She was born right here in San Francisco, weren't you, Mary? Well, not right in San Francisco. Oh, you mean uh, not in the city itself? You that's mean, it. Uh -huh. Oh, well. Where were you born? Was it Berkeley? No. Alameda? No. Uh, Sausalito? No. Where? Seattle. <laughs> well, that's that's only two inches away on a small map. It doesn't. <laughs> well, tell me, uh, Mary, have you? Uh... <laughs> Mary, have you uh, have you been having any fun here? I mean, what have you been doing all week? Huh? Oh, I've been all over. Yeah. I went to the zoo and seal rocks, and yesterday I went to Chinatown. Oh, Chinatown. Did you do any shopping? Did I? I bought some pajamas and a kimono with a dragon on it and mm. some chop suey. Mmm. And oh boy, am I sorry I told the man I was in a hurry. Why? He wrapped everything in one bundle. Mm. <laughs> Gee, chop suey and a kimono. Gee, the kimono must be all spotted. No, but the dragon gained three pounds. <laughs> no, I didn't know they liked chop suey. God. And oh, Jack. What? I must tell you something that happened to me last night. It was awful. What? Well, I was sitting in the lobby of my hotel, minding my own business. Uh-huh. And all of a sudden, my eye winked at the cutest fella. Oh. Huh. He was, I embarrassed. Well, don't feel bad about it, Mary. That could be a nervous twitch, you know. And then to make things worse, I had to go and drop my handkerchief right in front of him. Oh, well, that was just an accident, that's all. Yes, but when I said hello, I could have slapped my face. <laughs> Oh, I see. So you were flirting with this fellow in the lobby of the hotel, huh? Yeah. We had more fun all evening. We laughed and talked and had the swellest time. You did? Where'd you go? No place. He was the bell captain. <laughs> well, anyway, I'm glad you're having a good time here, Mary. I really am. I certainly am. But, oh, Jack, you know what? What? I forgot to write a poem about San Francisco. Oh, isn't that tragic, Don? Yeah. Oh, now, Mary, you go over there in the corner and work on it. Write a poem. Okay, Jack. Say, Don, did the rest of the gang get here yet? Well, Kenny just walked in. Where? There he is. He's going out again. Kenny, come back here. <laughs> Gosh, was that for me? Certainly, Kenny. What were you running away for? Oh, I feel silly broadcasting from a woman's club. <laughs> That's nonsense, Kenny. Don's here. I'm here. Do I look silly? You mean from where I'm standing? <laughs> yes. Yes. If that last yes wasn't my echo. You're fired. Well, Kenny, what have you been doing? Uh, seeing the sights like the rest of us? Oh, I've been getting around. Oh. Yesterday, I saw the new bridges, and this morning, I took a boat and went over to the World's Fair. You did? Yeah, and you know, Jack, there's hardly anyone over there. Gosh, they're not doing any business at all. It's terrible. <laughs> Kenny, they're still building the World's Fair. It won't be open until 1939. Oh, then that fan dancer I saw must have been a carpenter. <laughs> well, tell me, Kenny... Uh, uh, oh, Jack, I'm getting along swell with my poem. That's good. Uh, tell me, Kenny, now that you've seen them, uh, what do you think of those two new bridges? Oh, they're pretty. Pretty? Is that the way to describe those engineering masterpieces? Why, those two bridges are the result of men working and slaving and sweating day and night, pouring thousands and thousands of tons of concrete. Gee. Erecting miles and miles of mighty steel cables, employing mechanical skill that will never be surpassed or even duplicated in the history of civilization. How do you spell crab meat? C-R-A-B-N-E-A-T. <laughs> And you, Kenny Baker, <laughs> you stand there and say those bridges are pretty, those mighty triumphs of engineering. <clears throat> now what do you say? They're very pretty. <laughs> That's fine. I yell myself hoarse and get a very. Oh, well, sing your song, Kenny, and redeem yourself to our San Francisco friends here. Now, wait a minute. 
Hello? Hello, Mr. Benny. This is Gladys. Oh, you again, huh? Yeah, Phil Harris will be over in about ten minutes. Well, he better. Mm, if Phil thinks he can go running around to all his girlfriends while the program is on, he's crazy. Uh, how do you spell... Oh, shut up. <laughs> what are you going to sing, Kenny? I'm going to sing when the organ played Oh, Promise Me. That sounds all right. That's fine. Now, hold it a minute, Kenny. Come in. Mr. Benny? Yes? Is this the Western Women's Club? Yes, it is. Well, where are they? Woo-hoo! <laughs> I must have packed him in my bag. He's got a head like an old shaving brush. <laughs> when I hear an organ in the twilight glow, it brings back sweet memories of the long ago. Softly then the music fills my ego. Plato promised me sung by Kenny Baker. And you see, Kenny, you have nothing to worry about. You weren't a bit nervous. Well, at first I was going to fly to pieces, but then I said to myself, Kenneth, take hold of yourself. And I did. Oh, oh, well, it sounded like it, <clears throat> Kenneth. I thought your voice was pretty. Pretty? Is that the way to describe my voice when it took thousands and thousands of tons of concrete? Oh, my... quiet. <laughs> concrete, hmm? Jack. What? My poem is all finished. I think I've got something here. Well, Mary, this is one time we'd all like to hear it. Wouldn't you, Don? Yes, Jack. I think it will be very apropos. Oh, you do, eh? Kenny, stop showing off. <laughs> Go ahead, Mary. Let's hear your poem now. Okay. San Francisco. <clears throat> <clears throat> oh, San Francisco, San Francisco. You're the town I can't resist, though. Hmm. I, I like you... your parks and civic center. It's cool in summer, warm in winter. Winter? <laughs> and your harbor filled with water. Wait a minute, Mary. Oh, darn that. Hello? Hello, Mr. Benny. This is Gladys. <laughs> Tell Phil to get right over here to work. All right, slave driver. <laughs> hmm. Go ahead, Mary. Go ahead. Huh? Uh, 
Uh, where was I? In the harbor. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And your harbor filled with water, and your good old fisherman's war, with its lobster and its crab meat. Gee, I cannot get an orf. A north? Mm -hmm. Boy, that was a torf one, wasn't it, huh? <laughs> wasn't it Horwitz, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, huh? I climbed your hills and cars on cables. I would have walked if I was able. Able. Mm -hmm. yeah. And after that, I took a boat and sailed right through your golden goat. <laughs> goat, that's golden gate. <laughs> Is that all? Is, is that all there is to the poem? Huh? Yes, now all. wait a minute, Barry. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What about our? Well, you know. You oh, know. yes, John. I'm sorry. Last verse, all out. Mm -hmm. San Francisco off reminds us footprints in the sands of time. Jello, six delicious flavors: strawberry, raspberry, cherry, orange, lemon, lime. Boom. <laughs> well, that was a surprise to me, Mary, and I think you did very well considering the time you had to prepare it. You know. And now, folks. Hello, Jack, old boy. Here I am. Am I late? I don't know, Phil. Where are you going? <laughs> Am I late? Huh? Yeah. Well, I'm sorry, Jack, but we were playing an engagement in Sacramento last night, and we had to drive in. Well, the boys in your orchestra got here on time. I know, but I had to stay and sweep up the dance floor. Now, Phil, that's a lie. And then to make things worse, on the way in, I had to stop and have my car fixed. I know, Phil. The mechanic called up three times. <laughs> His name is Gladys. <laughs> anyway, you can't put anything over on me. I know where you were, and it's not to your credit to be seen with every girl in town. You don't see me running around. Well, it's your own fault. I wanted you to go out with me and meet some of these girls, didn't I? I could have gotten you a swell date. Oh, sure, like the girl you fixed me up with on New Year's Eve. That Dolores Del Schmutz. <laughs> Boy, was she a mess. Have you seen her since? Yes, Phil. Last Wednesday, I had a nightmare. <laughs> the last time I'll ever go to sleep. <laughs> and another thing, Phil, why do you always mix pleasure with business? Does Castellanos let his social life interfere with his work? Does Stokowski come in late on account of girls? He would if he had my little red book. <laughs> you and your little red book. I've got a book, too, haven't I, Mary? Yeah, it came with the telephone. Yeah, it came with the telephone. Yeah, it came with the telephone. Yeah. Next time you want me to read a poem. All right, Phil, now that you finally got here, you might as well do your stuff. What's it going to be? We're going to play By Mere Bis Duchesne. Had a little trouble with it. Yes, you did. <laughs> <don't> you? <laughs> well, Slepperman had a hard time teaching it to you. I know. <laughs> uh, the little Norwegian ditty there. Oh, well. Oh, wait a minute, Phil. There's the phone. Hello? Hello, Mr. Benny. This is Gladys. Well, what do you want now? I'm calling for Phil Harris. He says he'll be over in a little while. Now, wait a minute. Phil Harris is standing here right now. Then who's this guy? Aha, <laughs> uh -huh, you see, Phil, competition. Think that over while you're playing the next number. <laughs>
By mere bis to shame, please let me explain. By mere bis to shame means that you're grand. By mere bis to shame, again I'll explain. It means that you're the fairest in the land. I could say Bella, Bella, even say Boonderbar. Each language only helps me tell you how grand you are. Again, I'll explain by mere bis to shame. So kiss me and say you understand. By Mere Beast to Shane, played by the orchestra with a vocal refrain by Phil Harris. That was swell, Phil. You ought to sing more often. That's what they tell me. Oh. <laughs> did you think, uh, uh, didn't you think Phil did a great job, Don? Oh, yes, Jack. I thought he handled it with unusual esprit. Uh, what was that? Huh? Why, well, say, I thought he handled it with unusual esprit. Oh, yes, 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 quite. Well, yes. that means spirit. Well, why didn't you say so? <laughs> That's free. Has to ring in Spanish on me, you know? No, it's free is a French word, Jack. A French word? Of course. Certainly. Yeah. <laughs> well, so much for our trip to Europe, huh? And uh, now, fellas, not meaning to change the subject, but as long as we're here in San Francisco. Come in. Hello, fellas. Hiya, buddy. Hello. Well, Andy, I didn't expect you up here in San Francisco. You told me you couldn't make it. Well, I didn't think I could, Buck, but Ma and Pa wanted to come, so I thought I'd treat them to a little vacation. Oh. <laughs> what did you do, motor up? No, we took the night train. Ma slept in the lower berth, and Pa and me shared the upper. <laughs> well, the two of you in an upper berth, you must have had trouble getting undressed. Undressed? We couldn't even get our hats off. <laughs> Oh, that must have been awful. Well, well, we wouldn't have minded that so much, but our dog wouldn't get off the pillow. <laughs> oh, your dog was in there, too. My goodness. And she sure picked a fine place to have pup. <laughs> Gee, that... That must have been uncomfortable. Are you going back on the train? Oh, I don't think so. Pa got in a crap game with the porter and lost her return ticket. <laughs> well, don't worry, Andy. I'll lend you some money. What are you doing up here? <laughs> Tell me, Andy, have you been having any fun looking over the town? Yeah, I've been all over. Say, Buck, before I leave, I'd like to go to Chinatown and get some of that Chinese hash. Oh, you mean chop suey, huh? Uh-huh. Well, that's a coincidence, Andy, because I was just going to invite the gang down there and treat them to a real dinner. How about it, fellas? Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mary, call up and reserve a table. I know a swell place. I've got the address here somewhere. Oh, here's that card. Uh, Ling Fu chop suey like Mother used to make. <laughs> See, my mother never made any, you know. Uh, call them up, Mary. What's the number? Just ask for Ling Fu in Chinatown. Okay. Operator, get me Ling Fu's restaurant in Chinatown. Hold the line, please. Now, fellas, remember, the whole party's on me. I'm buying. Here's your no. party. Uh, you better talk, Jack. Okay. Hello? Hello? Ling Fu restaurant. Now, listen. I want to reserve a table for six. We'll be over in about 15 minutes. Who is this, please? This is Jack Benny. Jack Benny? Benny? No, Benny. Benny. The L is Slyland. <laughs> Now, look, we want you to fix us up some real Chinese dishes. You know, just give us enough chow mein and chop suey for six. Mix them up, you know. Okay, okay. Now, what can we have for dessert? Oh, we got the uh, nachi nuts, nice cookies, kumquat, sing pao pu, and jello. <laughs> oh, jello? Yes, slow belly, less belly, jelly, and lemon and lime. Look for the big lead lettuce on the blocks. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, hey, Don, did you hear that? You sled it. <laughs> well, all right, we'll be over in a few minutes. Now, look, uh, by the way, uh, uh, how much 
will all this cost, approximately? Uh-uh, the party's off. Mary, I'm just asking. How much? Ah, uh, six of paper, six dollar. Six dollars for chop suey? Why, I never heard of that. Now, listen, Ling Fu. Well, me no Ling Fu. Me plus boy. Oh, well, let me talk to the boss. Ling Fu. Okay, here he is. Uh, hello, Ling Fu. Hello, Slinger. <laughs> Why, Schlepperman! Quiet, you're talking to Ling Fu. Well, tell me, Schlepp, what are you doing in China, Tommy? How do you happen to be running a restaurant? Well, I'll tell you, Jackie, I figured like this. Everybody likes Top Susie. Mm -hmm. I look good in a kimono. So what am I waiting for? Time marches up. <laughs> oh, I can... <laughs> I can just picture you in a kimono. Say, you must look like a real Chinaman, man. Yeah, but there's only one thing wrong. What's that? A pigtail I wouldn't wear. Oh. <laughs> you know me, Jack. I'm a Yankee Doodle Dandy. Yeah, went to town. I don't blame you. Now, look, Slap, we're all coming over for chop suey. Now, what else have you got there that's good, you know? Oh, oh, Jackie boy, have I got a special dish prepared for you. You'll love it. A special dish? Huh? What is it? Egg foo young with matzo balls. <laughs> Say, that, that sounds tempting. Let's see. What, what else have you got? Well, we got some nice gefilte yakamine. Mm. And uh, listen, Jack, if yes. you want a real A number one delicacy, yes. you must try our Wa Su Ying Lu Tsao. Hey, I've never heard of that. What is it? Confidentially, it's herring. <laughs> oh, well, look, I slept smuggle, slept smuggle a little of it on my plate. Mm. Look under the rice. Okay. Now we'll be right over. Wait, I've never seen your place, Schlepp. How will I find it? Oh, you can't miss it, Jack. There's a big sign in the front. A sign? What does it say? Cleaning, pressing, and chop suey. <laughs> oh, fine. We'll be right over. Goodbye, Schlepp. Goodbye, goodbye. Chinatown, my Chinatown. You eat so much, you fall right down. <laughs> well, fellas, come on, fellas. Let's go. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, Jack, 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 what about the program? Oh, it's almost over anyway. Come on, fellas. Right, we'll go to China. Here's one swell dessert to give any meal a happy ending. Serve Jell-O chocolate pudding for dessert and listen to the family cheer. For Jell-O chocolate pudding is downright delicious. It has a real full chocolate flavor, a tempting rich chocolate color, and a smooth consistency that's creamy and luscious. Jell-O chocolate pudding is made with the same wholesome ingredients you'd use yourself in your own homemade chocolate pudding. But it's far quicker and easier to prepare. Just combine the contents of one package with milk, then cook and stir over a low flame until it's thick and smooth. It takes just a few minutes and you have a perfect dessert. If you like, you can vary it with toasted nut meats, raisins, or crisp shredded coconut. Directions are in every package. Jell-O chocolate pudding sells for the same low price as Jell-O. So ask your grocer tomorrow for Jell-O chocolate pudding. Say, Ling Fu's got great food, isn't he? Give me some more tea, Don. Oh, here you are, Jack. That was the last number of the 15th program in the new Jell-O series. And, uh, uh, lemon or cream? Lemon, Don. And we'll be with you again next Sunday night at the same time, broadcasting from Hollywood. Gee, this chop suey tastes good. Yeah, I like it, too. Yeah, man. Uh, Ouch! Kenny, look out for those chopsticks. Oh, look, Jack. I found a sardine under my rice. Give me that. Good night, folks. Yum, 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 yum. <laughs> Jell-O program through courtesy of Mervyn Leroy Productions. Jubilee is from the store of Every Day's a Holiday. Remember? This is Shane is from Love, Honor, and Behave. This is the National Broadcasting Company.